In this video, we are going to use Django channels together with Chart.js in order to create a simplified version of a live dashboard application. So let me show you exactly what we are going to build. I'm going to access this XXX space. We can add a new one over here, but first let's access the existing one. Over here, we have a randomly generated user. So the idea is that if you are logged in, it will give you back your user. But if you're not logged in, which is the case for me, it will generate random users. So if I go to the same space, to the same room, over here I have Mr. Mark Frank. And then over here I have another random user, Amanda Klein. If I'll put here 100, we will see everywhere. So each user will see a chart that Amanda Klein has contributed 100, let's say, dollars, okay? So now if Lisa Lynch adds 20, we will see an update. Also, each user will see this update, okay? So if we, for example, refresh a page, we will st still see this uh, history, okay? So we are storing those data also in the database. So right now what we can do is to create a new space. Let's call it ZZZ. We are taking to the ZZZ space and I'm just going to put over here 1000 as Janice Terry. And now if a new user joins the space, Nicole Schroeder, she sees that Janice Terry has contrib contributed 1000. She can add 200. She can add 1200 and right now Nicole Schroeder in total has 1400 while Janice Terry has 1000. So this is what we are going to build and I hope you guys will enjoy it. If you do please consider subscribing to the channel and yeah without further ado let's get started. Before we start to code, let's take a look at this very short and simple presentation related to Django channels to help us grasp the core concepts behind this package and how we can use it within our Django applications. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is what are actually Django channels? And this is an external package that needs to be installed in order to provide the functionalities related to real-time communication within our Django applications. And this approach uses WebSockets and what are WebSockets we will discuss on the next slide. But if we take a look at a traditional approach of building a chat application, uh, we can imagine that it would be very difficult to build it in a traditional approach because to see the changes, to see the user's messages, we would probably need to refresh the page or insert new messages uh, from time to time to see other users' messages. This approach isn't really good for the user experience. So with the use of Django channels and WebSockets, we are able to create a chat application where the data appears in real time and there is absolutely no need to reload the page. So now let's move to the next slide and discuss WebSockets. So WebSockets is a protocol, communication protocol, or you can say communication technology between the client and the server and it's bi-directional. So instead of having a standard request response, we have a bi-directional communication between the client and their server. And this communication lasts that long until the client or the server decides to cancel it. So let's imagine that the computers that you see over here are users that are typing in a specific room about, for example, sports or programming. What happens is that whenever a user decides to send a message, it goes through the server and then it's being broadcasted to all the uh, clients, all the computers. And with the use of JavaScript, we can then actually grab this message and update 
the document object model of each client in that particular room. So we will see real time messages and we will see what users are typing in real time without the need to reload the page. And if we would like to make this example a little bit more advanced, which we will in this particular tutorial, we can add a database so that we can actually store these messages which are associated with a particular room because we can have many rooms, of course. And then whenever we refresh the page by accident or on purpose, we will also see the entire history of those messages. So um, one thing that is quite important in this particular case is to have at least basic knowledge of JavaScript. If you haven't worked with JavaScript or if you haven't worked with Django and JavaScript, I would recommend you to check out my courses related on this topic. And the one on the right is a free one. You can find it on YouTube. I will place the link in the description below. And then we have a full version of this course, which is available on Udemy. And of course, the link will be also in the description below. If you know uh, JavaScript and you know how it works with Django, you can, of course, skip this particular part. Next, let's talk about WSGI and ASGI. Both are Python interfaces for serving web apps. But WSGI stands for Web Server Gateway Interface and can handle synchronous requests only, while ASGI stands for Asynchronous Server Gateway Interface and is capable of handling asynchronous requests. So Django supports both WSGI and ASGI. And if we would like to switch from WSGI to ASGI, which is required for Django channels, we need to change it in the settings py over here and then we need to um, make some changes to our asgi py file and uh, specifying which parts of our application should handle different types of requests so over here we have the http standard requests as well as the web sockets the next topic on the list are channel layers and this is the heart of every django channels application Channel layers allow Django channels to handle and manage real-time data exchange between the client and the server. They support multiple simultaneous connections, making it easier to handle large numbers of clients and data flow. And Redis is usually the backend for channel layers. It provides a reliable and efficient way to store and access the data. So you can think about channel layers as a uh, simplified solution for applications uh, to have many people sending and receiving messages at the same time without any confusion without getting mixed up and in the settings py we need to remember to include the settings for the channel layers we need to specify the backend and we also need to remember to define where the ready server is located and on which port it is running okay so now let's take a look at what are the necessary steps in order to have Django channels working within our Django project. So we can create a new Django channels project or we can use the existing one. The thing is that we need to remember to install the necessary packages. And in our case, that is channels and channels Redis. Then we need to add a WebSocket component defined as protocol type router to the default Django application in the ASGI file. So we saw this in, on the previous slide. And this will allow to handle WebSocket connections, enabling real-time communication between the server and the client. So next we need to create a consumer that will handle the WebSocket connections. And a consumer is like a view in a traditional Django application. So consumers are Python classes that handle WebSocket connections and receive and process data sent from the client. Speaking about the client, we also need to add a WebSocket on the client side. But before we do that, we can take a look at step number four, where we need to define the WebSocket routing in the Django project. And this involves creating a routing configuration that maps the URLs to consumers so that the correct consumer will be used for each WebSocket connection. 
And then we have point number five where we create the web socket on the client side. And this involves using JavaScript to create a WebSocket connection and sending and receiving data through that particular connection. In Django settings file, we need to add the channels to the installed apps list and configure the channel layer settings to use a channel layer backend. So in our case, it's going to be Redis. And then we simply need to start the Django development server and test the WebSocket connection. And then we have the last slide, which is related to a very, very simple demo connection. So let's go through it very quickly and then let's focus on the second part of the tutorial coding. Okay, so over here we have a defined consumer. We have some methods that are inside of this consumer class. And then over here we have a file which can be called, for example, main.js. And here we establish connection on the client side. Whenever the connection is established, we send a message to the server. So what happens is that this message goes through this receive method, okay? And then it sends back this message where it's picked up over here with this um, on message event listener. And then what we see in the console is this server. So it's this console log server and then message hello from the client. The very important thing is to establish this connection in the, in the correct way. So we need to take a look at this particular file, which is called routing py. And this path needs to match the one over here. If those path matches, then we probably will have a connection. And on the server side, if we take a look at the terminal, we can see probably the uh, printout of connected. And if we close the connection, we will see connection closed, closed with the close code, okay? So uh, this is just a brief introduction on how this works. I know it can be confusing, but once we start working on a little bit more advanced example, you will understand what is actually happening over here. All right, guys, before we start to code, let's take a look at what have I done so far. And I just started a brand new Django project. And within this project, I've added this stats application. Uh, I didn't do anything with it just yet. I just included it in the installed apps list. And then in the URLs py file of the main project folder, I also included static files in the URL patterns. And then I also created a super user so later on we can log into the Django administration and I did it of course using Python manage py create super user comment. All right, before we install Django channels, let's move on to the models py file of the stats application. And here let's define two classes that are necessary for this project. So the first one is going to be statistic, stati statistic, like this, which inherits from models of model, of course. And then we will have another one called data item. And this one, of course, also in inherits from models dot model. And what we need to do over here right now is to work on the fields for those classes. So the statistic will contain some data items and based on the data items, which are going to be grouped by the user, we will later display the chart. So first of all, let's add a field name, and this is going to be a models char field with the max length of 200. And then we will also have a slug for the name, and this is going to be a models slug field. We will set it to optional because later we will override the save method and we will check if the slug exists or not. And if it doesn't exist, we will create it. So um, let's leave it like this for now. And then if we take a look at the data item, over here what we will have is the statistic. So we will create a relation to the statistic and this is going to be a foreign key relation. So foreign key, statistic and on delete, we will do models cascade, okay? 
And the next thing is going to be the value. So this is going to be a model's positive small integer field. And we will also have the owner of this data item. And here we will have a model's char field because we will be using some fake users uh, mainly later on. So over here, let's set the max length of 200. All right. So let's return to the statistic very quickly and let's get the data. So I'm going to use a property decorator. And then I'm going to define a method called data. And over here, what I'm going to do is to return all the data items associated with a particular statistic. So self data data item set all. Okay. So this will give me all the data for the particular statistic. Okay. Um, next, let's also return a string representation method. Let's just return the name. Okay, and as mentioned before, let's override the save method so we can actually create the slug. So over here, I'm going to write self, self, arcs, and keyword arcs, and then super save, arcs, and keyword arcs, and it, Inside the save method, we are going to check if not self slug. And if this is not the case, we will write self slug is equal to and then slugify, which we need to import. So let's go to the top and here from Django utils text. Let's bring in slugify. And here we can run slugify and then pass in self name. All right. So we have our um, save method overridden. And also let's go very quickly to the data item class. And here let's also create a string representation method. Let's return and then maybe a F, we're using a F string. Let's put in self owner and then self value all right let's go ahead and save this let's jump into the admin py file from dot models we want to import statistic and we also want to import the data item and now we can register those models in the administration so admin site to register statistic and then admin site register data item let's go ahead and save this let's quit the development server from running python manage py make migrations and then python manage py migrate and python manage py run server again Let's go to the Django administration and login. And currently we have the stats over here. So we can actually try and create a statistic. Test stat. Let's go ahead and save this. And the slug has been created. So this is working. And then we can go to data items and we can try to add some uh, data item to this test statistic. So I'm going to put in 10 and the owner is going to be a test owner. Let's save this. Okay, we have this working. As the next step, let's go back to our terminal, quit the development server from running and install ch channels. So pip install channels and also channels redis. Okay, let's wait a few seconds. Now let's go back to Visual Studio Code to the settings py file. Let's add channels to the installed apps list. Channels, okay. Um, what I'm also going to do is to set the channel layer to handle real-time communication between different parts of the app. So uh, you probably remember from the presentation that we need to specify channel layers. 
and we are going to set the uh, Redis to store and pass messages efficiently in real time. Okay, so here is our Redis backend, and it is located over here on this particular port. So this is uh, for the channel layers. We also need to switch our application from WSGI to ASGI. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to copy this, comment this out, and then here I'm going to put in ASGI. And then also we need to remember to uh, change this over here from core ASGI. So right now we are going to not use this particular file, but this one over here. Okay. So let's save this. And basically, I think we are done uh, in the settings py. What we need to do next is to go to this ASGA file and we need to continue work on our configuration for Django channels. So what I'm going to do is to copy um, the piece of code that you saw on the presentation and I'm going to simply paste it over here. So um, right now we don't have the routing py file. So let's create it very quickly in the stats application. So let's write routing py. We will work on it just in just a few seconds. And over here we have specified that the HTTP requests are going to be handled by the Django ASGI application, while the WebSocket requests are going to be handled by the URL router with the allowed host origin validator and auth middleware stack. Okay, so with those two uh, middleware layers. And uh, if you have changed your, um, if you have a different, sorry, if you have a different name of your main project folder, so for uh, our case, for my case, this is core, as you can see over here, remember to change this as well. So if you have the name of the project folder called my project here you should also add my project instead of core okay so with that being said we can save the updated asga py file and we can move to the next step which is to go to stats and over here to create a consumers py file so as mentioned before consumers are like views in the traditional django applications and the routing py file which we have created over here is like urls so uh, first of all we want to create a view then to map it in the routing so we will begin by um, importing the async websocket consumer so from channels and then generic websocket we want to import async websocket consumer all right and now we can define a class which will inherit from this async websocket consumer and i'm going to call it dashboard consumer okay so as mentioned before it will inherit from async web websocket consumer and here we can define a few methods necessary for this all to make sense so the first one is going to be the connect method i'm just going to write pass for now but generally this method uh, is called when a sub WebSocket connection is initiated. Okay, so this is the first thing. Then we will have the disconnect method. So the disconnect method gets called when a WebSocket connection is simply closed. So we can write disconnect, and this will take in self and the close code. Okay, and for now, I'm also going to put in pass. And then we will have a receive method, which is also, of course, async. And this will take in self and text data. So this method is called when a message is received uh, from the WebSocket. OK, so for now, let's also put in pass. All right. So um, we will do some more logic later on. But for now, let's begin by doing the await self accept in the connect method so here we can print connection okay and then in the disconnect we will simply maybe um print connection closed okay 
all right or we can use the f string and then connection closed and we can put in the close code so connection closed with code close code all right and then in the receive method well over here we will get some text data as mentioned before so this text data needs to be loaded uh, to a json object so let's import json import json okay and here we can write text data json is equal to and then json loads text data all right so this is going to be a json string which gets loaded to a json object right now over here okay so on the client side we will use json stringify and then we will send this data to the dashboard consumer it will be picked up by the receive method and here we will pick up this data and load it into a json object okay so as the next step we will get from this particular data the message and this is going to be text data json and we will grab the message and we will also have a sender over there sender and the sender is going to be called the sender so if this is unclear i'm going to explain it in just a second so here i'm just going to print out the message and the sender and right now what we are going to do is to send the message back to the client over the websocket so right now we aren't going to distribute this message to all the users that are inside of this group we are just going to send it back for ourselves so let's write await self send and over here we need to specify the text data this time with json dumps okay and then we are going to write the message in quotation marks like this and to this key we are going to assign the value of the message and then we are going to do the same for the sender and we are going to assign to this key the sender all right so let's go ahead and save this and as the next step let's work on the routing py file let's begin from grabbing path from django urls and then also let's go to the consumers and let's import our dashboard consumer so we will have websocket url patterns and we will only have one pattern and here we will write ws and then a string dashboard slug for example something like this so i want to name it dashboard slug so it's very clear that we we are dealing with a dashboard slug and um, then we will have the dashboard consumer and we need to add s a s g i okay so let's go ahead and save this and right now what we need to do is to actually work on our template so we can establish also a connection on the client so we need to work on the templates we also need to create some very basic traditional views so let's go to the settings py file let's go to the templates section in the deers let's specify base deer templates so here we are telling django to look for additional templates in the main directory so next to the core folder stats we will create a templates directory where we will place our base HTML okay so this is one thing we will uh, do some work on the base HTML in just a second as the next step let's actually go to our um, stats application to the views py file and over here let's create two views the first one is going to be main which takes in a request 
and over here i'm just going to return render and then we are going to pass in the request and we are going to use the stats main html so in a second we are going to create those main html those html files and then we are going to put in for now an empty dictionary because currently we don't have anything to pass to the template okay this is the first view the second one is going to be the dashboard so let's write dashboard and here we will have a request and a slug and let's also return render let's pass in the request and this time we will be using stats dashboard html and for now we are also going to put in an empty dictionary okay so now in the stats let's create another directory called templates inside of this templates directory let's create another one called stats and then let's place in the main html from over here and then the dashboard html dashboard html okay so both of those file files will inherit from base html and the base html is just going to be an ordinary bootstrap starter template which i'm going to paste and as you can see we have some adjustments over here made very small ones we have a div with a class container margin top and inside we have a block content for um, template inheritance purposes and then we also have the block scripts over here so this is basically it we can now save the base html and inside of the dashboard html we can write extends base html and then we can write block scripts and for now let's leave it empty and let's also write block content and for now let's put in hello world okay and in terms of the main html we can actually go to our um use py file and here we can import our models from dot models we want to import statistic and then data item we already created one statistic in the django administration so we can write qs is equal to and then statistic objects all okay so what we are going to do over here is to list all the available statistic and we can choose the existing one or later we will be able to create a new one so here we just have this query set which now can be passed to the template okay and then if we go back to the main html file we can inherit of course from base html and in the block content we can write a check if there are statistics then we can have a unordered list and then we can loop through those statistics so for l in the qs we can display them as list item and let's display um, the name okay so let's put in l dot name so this is going to be for the main html the first version of the main html and then for the dashboard we will have for now just hello world and let's create the urls py file so over here let's import from django urls path from dot views we want to import um the main what were the names main and dashboard okay main and dashboard okay let's specify the app name to stats and then let's create the url patterns and here let's provide the path so we will have main and the name is going to be main 
Okay, and then the other path is going to be slug. And here we will have a dashboard and the name is going to be dashboard, just like this, okay? Well, let's go ahead and save this. And then we need to go to the main project folder and include the URL patterns in the main URLs py file. So I already inc uh, imported include. So we can now write path and then we can uh, simply set it as our main path. So the main will be in fact the main view for the entire project. And here let's write include and then stats URLs and then let's set the namespace to stats. All right. So now let's go back to the terminal, Python manage py run server. Okay. Let's go to the main page. We have a test stat, okay? And right now um, it's just a test stat, so we can't click on it. It's just a list item without any uh, hyperlink. So in order to access it, we need to go to test stat. And we have page not found. That's not a good sign. Mm. So let me check very quickly what is going on. Okay, slug, I missed the dash. And we have template does not exist. So um, dashboard stats that, okay, I missed the S. All right, sorry guys, my bad. And there we have it, hello world. Okay, so what we can do is to create a get absolute URL for the statistic in order to get us to the detail page of the statistic. And then if we go to the detail page of the statistic, we will be able to use this data property, okay? So let's uh, write this uh, function, get absolute URL. And we need to import reverse. So from Django URLs, we want to import reverse. Okay. And then what we want to do is to go to stats dashboard. And then we will not be operating with the primary key, but the slug. So we need to assign self slug. Okay. So now uh, having this get absolute URL, we can go back to our main HTML and here we can use href. Okay, let's wrap it. And then here we can use the element get absolute URL. Let's save this. Let's go back. And there it is. All right. As the next step, let's go back to our Visual Studio code. And inside of the stats, let's create a static folder. And in the static folder, let's create another one called stats. And inside of the stats, let's create a dashboard, dashboard JS file. So what we want to do is to establish a connection on the detail page. So over here. We don't need any connection over here. We don't need real time data uh, in this particular part of our application. We need it over here. Okay. So, what I'm going to do over here is to first of all link this dashboard.js with the dashboard HTML. And this is where we have, this is why we have the block scripts. So, here I'm going to put in script and then we are going to define the source. So we need to load static, load static, okay? And here let's place static, and then we want to refer to stats, and then dash board JS. Okay, and we will also add defer and close the script. All right, so um, having this, Let's go to the dashboard.js and let's write console log. 
hello world. Let's hit refresh, inspect console, and we have failed uh, to load the resource. So I'm going to quit the development server from running and try it one more time. And we have hello world. All right. So as the next step, what I'm going to do is to place the code that you saw on the presentation, but with some changes. So um, we are going to connect to um, the routing where we have a dynamic path. We are using the dashboard slug. And here we don't have any dynamic data just yet. So and the slug is currently my path, but just for testing purposes, I'm going to replace it with test stat, okay? And we will see if we are able to connect. All right, so I'm going to refresh and we have uh, failed to connect, unfortunately. So, all right, guys, so um, I did resolve this issue. Um, what you need to do is to run in the terminal pip uninstall channels redis and then run pip install channels redis version 341 so to be honest i don't know why isn't it compatible however if we downgrade it everything should be working so what we can do next is to simply console log the socket okay Let's save this, let's reload, and here we have the WebSocket. However, we aren't getting any response just yet. So if we go to the terminal, if we take a look at the views.py file, sorry, not the views.py, but the consumers.py file, um, we don't see um, this message and the sender. So what I'm going to do is to simply comment this out, we're going to print out the text data JSON, and then here I'm going to put in as a message hello world from the server. Okay, let's save this, let's hit refresh, and then there we have it server message hello world from the server, and then over here we have hello from the client. So um, if we take a look at the connection, we have it over here. And then if I close this, I'm just going to copy it very quickly. We have connection closed with code 101, okay? So I'm going to go back and then we should have the connection again. And hello from the client. So um, let me try this one more time. I'm going to bring in message. Okay, uh, I, I don't think we have set the sender on the client side, or we did. Mm, oh yeah, we didn't. So here, let's do the sender. Test sender. Okay, so once the connection is established, we are sending a message to um, to the server we are picking it, picking it up in this receive method and now let's try to print it one more time message print the sender and let's remove this print text data json so let's try it one more time okay and there we have it, okay? Hello from client is the message, and then we have the test sender. As the next step, let's just leave our consumers py file for a little while and go to the traditional views py file and work on our main view. So currently we have one statistic, we are listing the statistics, we are passing the query set to the template, but we would also like to create new statistic from a simple form with uh, one text input. So what I'm going to do is to go to main HTML and over here I'm going to paste this form. It's really simple. Um, we have one input text, the name is new statistic, and then we have a button type submit and 
uh, it has a label of add. So what we are going to do is to check if there is a post request. And if it is, we are going to fetch this new statistic and then create a new statistic object based off the name. So let's save the main HTML. Let's go to the views py file and below the QS, let's write if request method is equal, request method is equal to post. Then what we are going to do is to grab this new statistic. I'm just going to call it new stat. This is going to be request post get and then new statistic. Okay. And what we are going to do next is to create a new object um, if the new statistic doesn't exist. And if it does exist, we are going to use that particular uh, object. So we will use the get or create method. So this is equal statistic objects get or create. And here we will set the name as new stat. Okay. So if we have uh, the statistic, then this usually is created over here. We don't need the created, but usually we have created. And if the statistic exists, the created is false. If it doesn't exist, the created is true. So I'm going to leave it like this. And then what we can do is to return redirect. OK, so we need to import redirect. So from Django shortcuts, import redirect, redirect. And then what we are going to do is to redirect the user to stats dashboard. And then the slug is going to be obj.slug. OK, let's save this. Hello world, add, and we are taken to the hello world page. And here we have the hello world slug. All right, let's do the same for the dashboard. So let's finish this view. I'm going to import get object or 404. And here what we are going to do is to set the OBJ based on get object or 404. We are going to try to get the statistic based on the slug. So slug is equal to the slug that we have over here. All right, so we are getting the object. And then what we are going to return to the template are a few things. We could, um, we could simply return the object, but I'm going to refer to the object name. I'm going to refer to the slug as obj slug. And then I'm also going to refer to data as obj data. And then we will have the user. So here, what we can do is to write request user username. If request user dot username. And in other case, we are going to use the faker package to generate fake names. So let's quit the development server from running pip install faker. All right, and then what we need to do is to go back to Visual Studio Code. And what we need to do is to import Faker from Faker. So import, uh, sorry, from Faker, import Faker. We need to instantiate Faker. So fake is equal to Faker. And now what we can do over here is to write fake name like this. Okay. So um, we can go ahead and save this particular views py file. And if we go to the dashboard, now instead of hello world, we can paste in the code. And again, I'm just pasting it in just to save some time. So let's go through it very quickly. Over here, we have the dashboard name, we have the slug, we have the user, and then we have a form in order to input some data items, okay? So we have um, input data input and with the ID data input and the type is number and then we have just a button to submit the form. And then we have um, another column 
for the chart.js. So what we need to do is to also grab the CDN for the chart.js. I'm going to paste it in the block scripts above the stats dashboard. Okay, I'm going to save this and then I'm going to hit refresh and we need to run the development server. Okay, and here we have it. So we have the slug, the user, and the form to input the data. We don't see the chart just yet. Okay, we will um, we will uh, focus on loading the chart a little bit later. All right. The problem right now is that um, we have this test stat URL, and right now currently we are at the hello world. So if we go to the routing and change the slug to hello world. So just to show you, here we have test that and then the routing is hello world. Right now we will have a problem. So um, let me reload the page and we have WebSocket connection to uh, this particular path has failed. So how can we fix this? Well, we can grab the slug that we passed over here. So I did it just to have a very simple example. Um, and now it is extremely easy to grab this uh, slug. So what we need to do is to head over to the dashboard. We need to find the span with the ID dashboard slug and just pick it up. So in the dashboard JS, above the socket let's create a variable called dashboard slug and this is going to be document and then get element by id and then what we are going to ref refer to is the dashboard slug which i'm going to simply copy and the next step is i'm going to console log the dashboard slug so let's save this let's hit refresh and there we have the dashboard slug. So let's grab the text content of this dashboard slug. And here we have, here we have it. Okay, so this is our dashboard slug. Just in case any problems, I'm going to also put in the trim method to remove any white spaces uh, in the front and in the back. All right, so this is now the dashboard that we can use. As the next step, I'm going to include this dashboard slug in our uh, WebSocket URL. So actually, I'm going to change this to backticks. And then I'm going to do it like this. Now, window location host will be injected. And then this is going to be a dynamic dashboard slug with which also needs to be injected okay so dashboard slug all right let's save this and let's see if this will work or not okay and now we are referencing the hello world as you can see over here perfect if we go now to the consumers py file and above the connection print we will we will print out the print scope and we will save the file and uh, let's go to the terminal and here we have this printout with a lot of information so what we want to do is to access the URL route and now let's go back and as you can see we have arcs empty and keyword arcs empty so if we go back to routing and change this back to slug we will see that the quarks is now the keyword arguments consist of a key slug and the value hello world so we can get this dashboard name from the URL route parameters. And then we are going to store this name as an instance variable for later purposes, okay? So let's do it very quickly. I'm going to remove those prints. 
and then I'm going to set the dashboard slug and this is going to be self scope and then we need to access the URL route and then the keyword arguments and then we need to access the dashboard slug or in our case it's going to be just slug because if we go to the routing we have slug so i'm going to call change it to dashboard slug dashboard slug okay like this dashboard slug and now if we go back to the consumers it's going to be dashboard slug all right and as mentioned before we will store this in uh, instance variable and we will need it for later purposes so self dashboard slug is equal to dashboard slug okay as the next step we actually need to create a room group name using the dashboard name and i'm actually going to use the dashboard slug for this particular case so self room group name is going to be using f string stats and then i'm just going to put in the dashboard slug all right next we need to add a websocket to this room group so it can receive messages broadcasted to that particular group okay so we will do it with the await key then self self channel layer group add we will pass in the self group name room group name and the self channel name all right and then over here nothing else changes so if we would like to remove the websocket from the group we can do it in the disconnect method so over here we can again use await and then self self channel layer and then group this time discard is card and we need to pass in the self group name and the self channel name all right so uh, we have our two methods completed right now what we can do next is to focus on um, broadcasting the messages to all the consumers in the group so what we have right now is a situation where we send the message back to ourselves so let's take a look at this i'm going to first of all i'm actually going to log out okay so right now we have server message hello from the server and the user as you can see is fakely generated i'm going to copy this then i'm going to have a situation over here we have again message hello from the server however we don't get any additional message over here so we have a new user and we have server message hello from the server so basically what we are doing right now is to send the message to ourselves, and we would like to send the message to all the users in the room group so how to do this we need to go to um, this receive method and over here what we need to do is to simply write await and then self channel layer again group group sent and here we need to refer to the self um, room group name and over here we need to specify the message so i'm going to put in the message as the message okay and uh, we we need a special um, method which will take care of sending it so it's going to be defined in the type so in the type we will have let's call this statistic it has to be as a string so statistics message okay and in the statistic message which we will define in a second we will run this await self send so let's do it very quickly 
um, I'm going to put in over here this async statistics. I'm just going to copy the name statistics message, which takes in a self and an event. And now we are actually going to grab the message from the event. So it's going to be message equal to, and then the event message. Okay. And then what we are going to do is to run this await self send. And we are going to put in the message. Okay. So hopefully um, this will work and we will find out very soon. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to hit refresh. refresh and now we see as you can see two messages okay so if i make this bigger you you have two and what i'm going to do next is to add another user to this particular room so here we have two okay and here we should have three and there it is so each time a user uh, joins the room we have a message hello from the client so this is a very good news because we are now distributing the messages not only to ourselves, but also to the users that are currently in that room. So now let's also try to display the sender. So over here, what we need to do is to include the sender. So let's add another key, the sender, assign the sender. Here, we will also add a sender and we need to pick it up from the event. So it's going to be sender event sender. Okay. And then we need to go back to our dashboard JS. And uh, here we have the event data. So what we can do is to grab the sender and the message from the event data and we can console log the sender and we can console log the message and we can do this because in the consumers in this static message we are sending the mess we are sending this particular part of code okay so we are sending it back to the client we are sending the message and the sender and with this piece of code, self channel layer group send, we are basically sending the message to all the consumers in the room. Okay. But we are doing it through this statics message defined over here. So let's see if this will work or not. Okay. So I have unfortunately undefined um message okay so I, I see the message i see the sender but i'm not able to pick it up so um this is probably related to um the fact that i need to turn it into a json object so currently i have a json string so in the dashboard js over here the event data should be parsed so let's do it json parse and right now we should have JavaScript object, which we can simply destructurize. So I'm going to save this and hit refresh. And right now I have test sender and hello from the client. So this is working. The problem right now is that um, this message gets sent over here whenever the connection is opened. So it gets sent and then we get it back over here. And we would like to send a message which is different from hello from the client um, whenever this form is submitted, okay? So what we need to do is to simply uh, create an on-click event on the button. So let's first grab the submit button from our dashboard. The submit button is located over here. I'm just going to grab it. All right, and I'm going to go to the dashboard.js 
And over here, I'm going to create a new const submit btn, and this is going to be equal document get element by ID and submit btn. All right, so with the submit btn submit button, we can now run a add event listener on it. So beat submit btn add event listener. And we want to listen on the click event. So whenever this button gets clicked, we want to execute some code. And first of all, we are going to grab the, uh, the value which will be in this particular input. So again, we need to grab this input and we can do it by going to the dashboard again. And here we have this data input. So in the dashboard JS, let's create a new variable called data input. And this is going to be document and then get element by ID and data input, okay? So right now what we can do is to actually uh, refer to this data input and store it in a separate variable. So somewhere over here, let's create a variable data value is equal to data input dot value just like this okay and then what we need what we can do is to grab this socket sent and put it over here and the message is not going to be the hello from the client it's going to be whatever comes through that particular input so in our case it's going to be the data value and then we will also need the user so the user needs to be defined as well. So let's create a new variable user. And this is going to be uh, going to the dashboard, the user from over here, okay? So um, let's grab it and then document get element by ID. Let's pass in the user text content trim okay i'm going to place it below the dashboard slug and then we can use it over here all right so let's save this let's refresh okay we don't have any messages and now if i run i okay i'm going to also refresh all the pages and of course, I can't put in high because this is a number input, so I'm going to put in 10. And there we have Anthony Anderson and 10. Okay, so this is working. And it's being broadcasted. It's being sent to all the users in this particular space. Great. Okay, so what we want to do next is actually grab the sender and the message and display it below the form, okay? So how can we do this? Well, if we delete the console log over here, we will refer to a special place which we need to define in our dash dashboard HTML and we are going to simply add the sender and the message as a paragraph. So first of all, in the dashboard HTML, below this div with a class row, let's put in a div with the ID data box. In the dashboard JS, let's create a new const called data box, and this is going to be equal document get element by ID data box, okay? And right now we can refer to this data box, data box inner, HTML and we can add a paragraph. So let's put in the paragraph and let's inject the sender and also let's inject the message. Okay. And let's also delete the socket on open since we don't need it anymore. And we can also delete this console log uh, with the data from the server. Okay, so let's save this. I'm going to refresh the page everywhere. Okay, we don't see any 
uh, more console logs and then what i'm going to do is to put in 12 and there we have melissa bernard 12 and then if we go over here we see melissa bernard 12 melissa bernard 12. if i put in as daniel taylor 20 and we see daniel taylor 20 daniel taylor 20 and daniel taylor 20. perfect now the problem is that if we refresh the page we lose the history okay so let's return to the consumers and somewhere down below we are going to create some additional methods the first one is going to be uh, create data item method which will take in self self sender message and a slug okay and the other one is going to be an async method and here we will have a safe data item as the name okay and this will take in also self sender message and a slug so if we need to create a new data item this is the case for us we need to use a synchronous function and we will use the database sync to async decorator which is used to allow a, a synchronous function to interact with the database so what is going to happen over here is we, that we are going to use this database sync to async we are going to create a data item over here and then we are going to call the create data item method asynchronously from this particular uh, method and this method will be called in the receive method so let's do it step by step starting from the imports from django channels sorry not from django channels from channels db we want to import this database sync to async and then from dot models we want to import the statistic and the data data item all right so over here we need to use this decorator database sync to async and then we will grab the statistic because the data item is associated with the statistic and there's a foreign key relationship so we will need to get the statistic first we will get it by the slug and then we can simply return data item objects create and here we will set the statistic statistic as the obj the value is going to be set as the message and then the owner is going to be set as the sender okay so this is ready and now we can call this await self create data item passing the sender the message and the slug okay and then what we need to do is to go to our receive um, receive method and maybe somewhere above the uh, await self channel layer group send we can call this save data item so we will have await and then self save self save data item we will pass in the sender we have the sender from over here we have the message from over here and then we need to refer to the dashboard slug and we don't have it yet but this is why we defined the dashboard slug over here so we can simply create this variable dashboard slug is equal to self dashboard slug and we can put it also over here all right and this should save um, the message the data item in our database and let's find out if this will work or not so i'm going to save this uh, and then in the hello world i'm going to place in 20 and we have websocket is already in closing clo or closed state i'm going to refresh try one more time and we will see if this worked or not i need to log into the administration again 
data item and Matthew Hawkins 20. So this is working perfect. So what I'm what I want to do right now is to refresh and we don't see any history um, just yet. So this is the next step. If we take a look at the ordinary views, we have this data, okay? So using this um, data uh, value, which is OBJ data, passed as a key data to our template, we can now go to this template and inside of this data box, we can do a if check, if data, and then we can simply loop through the data. So for L in, in data, we can just the same way as we did in dashboard JS, um, we can return this paragraph, okay? So it will be a paragraph with the element owner and the element value. Let's save this. Let's refresh. And now we have the history. So let's put in 20. I'm now logged in, so I have my username. Okay, we see it everywhere. And then if we refresh, we still see it. Perfect. As the next step, let's go to the ViewsPY file and let's create another view for the charts. So this is the moment where we will work also on the charts. So I'm going to create a new function view, which is going to be called chart data, and this will accept the request and the slug, and it will return a JSON response. Return JSON response, which, which needs to be imported from Django HTTP. So from Django, HTTP, we want to import JSON response. Okay, so we will return this JSON response over here. And then we can, first of all, pick up the statistic. So it's going to be obj and then get object or 404 and statistic. And we can put in set as slug the slug. And as the next step, we are going to create some query sets and it's going to be created based of this object and we will use annotate. So if you, you don't know how annotate works, I'm not going to explain it right now. I created a video on annotate recently on aggregate and annotate. So if you are confused how this works, uh, please watch the video. What it does, it groups the values which we are going to sum by the owner. So for example, if I, let's say I'm Luke, so if I add 10, uh, let's say we have Martin who adds 20, and then I will add again 20. So in the chart, I want to have a situation where the chart is created by summing up the values by the owner. So in my case, it's 10 plus 20, it's 30, and Martin has only one data item, so it's going to be 20, okay? So hopefully this will give you an idea what we are trying to do. So it's obj data values. So we are turning uh, query sets to dictionaries over here and we are picking up the owner and then we are going to run annotate on the owner, annotate like this on the owner and then um, as the next step, we actually need to import some from Django DB models import some. Okay, and now we can sum the value. Okay, so we can sum the value of the data item. Okay, so this is our query set, and we need to prepare the chart data chart data itself and the chart labels so maybe you can pick up a better name than chart data but i'm just going to leave it as it is 
Um, and here we will use a list comprehension. And again, I'm not going to uh, explain what is happening over here. Just if you're confused, please watch the video uh, in the comment below. And we are here grabbing all the values, okay? And here we are going to grab the owners. So as labels, we will have owners. So we will need to access the owner and the query set. All right, and now we can return this JSON response. So we will have chart data set to chart data and chart labels chart labels like this set as chart labels all right let's save this and now we need to also include this uh, chart data in the urls py so we will import chart data and we will place it below the dashboard so i'm just going to copy this paste it we will have slug and then chart. And this is going to be chart, chart data, and we will set the name as chart. All right, let's save this. And right now we need to go back to the dashboard. And here we need to work on a function which will fetch this uh, chart data. So somewhere below the submit BTN, I'm going to create a new function called fetch chart chart data and this is going to be an async function because we are going to use the fetch uh, fetch uh, function which basically returns a promise and we want to handle this promise with this async await syntax so i'm going to make it extremely simple it's going to be uh, a response variable assigned to await fetch and here we will have window location pref and then we will add chart like this okay and then we will have const data is equal to and then await response json and then we are going to simply return the data all right let's also maybe console log the data before returning it okay and then i'm going to call this fetch chart data over here fetch chart data okay let's save this let's hit refresh and there it is we have chart data and chart labels okay so chart data is 20 and 20 so matthew hawkins has 20 and me i have 20. if i add 10 I should have then 30. So let's add 10. I'm going to refresh. And now, as you can see, I have 30 instead of 20. So this is sorted, summed up values by the owner, by the user. Okay. So as the next step, I'm going to paste in a function very quickly that draws the chart. And over here, this is a basic uh, chart.js documentation example with the difference that we, we switched the type to pi. And over here, we are fetching the chart data. We are picking up the chart data and the chart labels. And then we are assigning the, la the chart labels to labels and the chart data to data. So one thing is also missing that we need um, the context uh grabbed from the dashboard we need to refer to this canvas with the id my chart so what i'm going to do is to put it over here okay and now what we can do instead of fetching data is to draw the chart okay and there it is all right so this is working um However, let's see if the updates work as well. Okay, so as you can see, nothing happened. To fix this, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And here I'm going to paste a special function for updating the chart. 
it's going to be updated in a way that the previous chart is going to be destroyed. So over here we have this let chart variable. Here we assign the chart. And here we are checking if the chart exists. And if it does, it's get, it gets destroyed, okay? And then what we do is to draw it once again. So we need to call this update chart in the socket on message, okay? So I'm going to save this. I'm going to refresh all the windows. And right now I'm also going to log out. So I'm going to once again refresh all the windows. We will have different users. And I'm going to add 30. And as you can see, the chart gets refreshed. I'm going to add 40. The chart gets refreshed. And here it looks the same. And here it looks the same. And then if I add 500 over here, we can see that all the charts are updated. Okay, and we see all the data. And if we refresh the page, we also see the data. So this is it for this particular tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I wish to see you in the next video on the channel. Take care and bye-bye.